Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the X Frontier, one of your trusted channels for Casper News. Now, if you missed the Blockchain Hub in Davos last week, don't worry. This is going to be a video that's going to summarize hopefully all three days in under 10 minutes. Let's kick it off. Kicking day one off was Ralph Kubli of the Casper Association on financial asset tokenization on why tokenizing assets through an algorithmic standard is crucial to avoiding another financial systemic risk that we experienced in 2008. Ralph sat with Willie Bromberts of the Actus Foundation, the Algorithmic Contract Types and Unified Standards. This is the governing body that is laying down the groundwork for 32 standards that can cover up to 95% of all financial activity. They worked with Casper Labs and Ariadne to develop Nucleus Finance that is going to standardize and simplify financial contracts for large financial institutions, and banking systems. Michael Stoyer, co-founder of Casper Labs and Make was also there presenting on the new Casper wallet, as well as other awesome features like Casper name service, Casper market, and one of my favorites, Casper click, which will allow you to move across dApps across the ecosystem with one single sign-in. Max Shen, the CEO of Burrito Wallet also announced the integration to the Casper network. Burrito Wallet is a non-custodial wallet with direct integration into Bitthumb. More wallets, it means more onboarding of users onto the Casper network. Mark Degen, board member of Casper Labs, sat with Dr. Daniel Risch, the Prime Minister of Liechtenstein, on how governments can adopt and harness this new technology. Mark asked, how can one sell technology to the governments? And Dr. Risch's response gave me chills. He said, quote, you can't. You don't have to sell. You have to consult. So you have to be early. You have to find other governments or administration people who listen and who want to move on and go further. Now, piggybacking off of what Dr. Rich said, we have this tweet from IPWE. IPWE President Leanne Pinto has been selected as an industry representative for the United States Patent and Trade Office, roundtable on patents and NFTs, and we'll discuss IPWE's established and enterprise blockchain, i.e. Casper, solution for IP. Now, this is what the Casper team and partners have been doing in 2022. Enterprise adoption is not flashy, it's not sexy, it's slow, and it happens in the background. Kicking things off in day two, Ivan Anastoshov of TrustSwap announced the integration of Casper into their platform. TrustSwap provides DeFi tools for token holders and businesses to mint and secure crypto assets. Currently supports Ethereum ERC20 tokens and the Binance Smart Chain. Now gas fees are paid in the currency of the chain which the tokens are created. This is going to help bring more DeFi infrastructure into Casper. Meta Parlkar, the CTO of Casper Labs, Liam Pinto, president of IPWE, and Dan Daniela Barbosa of the Linux and Hyperledger Foundation announced the launch of Siam, the safe intelligent asset management platform of IPWE and the largest NFT deployment in the history of 25 million patents being minted on the Casper blockchain. CMO of Advasa and the CEO announced the first use case with Casper and IPWE in the U.S., which is to have human-generated IP valuations through Casper in order to increase liquidity and financial inclusion in the IP space. Sham of IBM and Ashuk of Casper Labs demonstrate the power of hybrid networks through an atomic cross-chain swap of tokenizing bonds. Casper is the first blockchain that is endorsed by IBM, and together they are tapping into unlocking and carving out a share of the $471 trillion market. Shyam sits at a fireside chat with Meta, Parlikar, and Daniela Barbosa discussing the future of hybrid blockchains. Casper is a member of the Hyperledger Foundation, and Daniela mentions the importance of interoperability naming Casper alongside some of the largest enterprise blockchains like R3's Corda. CZ of Binance had a fireside chat with Meta Parlikar, and to me one of the biggest takeaways is CZ acknowledging the importance of enterprise blockchain adoption, and I quote, I think enterprise use is very important. The enterprise adoption curve is typically slower than retail, but when enterprises adopt something, they never stop. So when a company uses a system, they just keep using it. This is what Casper's after. Sure, it's slower, but on the long term, it's more sustainable. Joel Corrado of Casper Labs sat with Dr. Garif Yalak of Cisco Systems to discuss data sovereignty in the Web3 and Metaverse space. Cisco will work with Casper to develop use cases in different verticals. Cisco is a Fortune 100 company, a multinational digital communications technology corporation that delivers software, cloud, and security solutions to enterprises. Ashuk of Casper Labs sat with Jais Ranjan, the Secretary of Information Technology of the Government of Telangana in India, 
Now, in May of last year, they partnered with Casper to be the preferred blockchain to facilitate government operations and to foster more use cases. Now, during the event at Davos, they announced the success of how Casper is solving the pain point for SMEs when it comes to payments and invoice factoring. The secretary was optimistic that more use cases will be rolling out. Day three kicked off with Dr. Wolf Call, CEO of Menagerie, alongside Ramon, founder of Nova Group, and Dr. Vincent Paker of Numena Digital, announcing Tally, an invoicing processing platform on the Casper blockchain. According to Statista, invoicing is a $100 trillion market. They also have intentions of integrating this to Nucleus Finance, which, in my opinion, will be a very interesting pairing. Perhaps the biggest announcement of the day was the partnership with XPRIZE. Lance Casper Keen, thank you for sharing this from Michael Stoyer of the Casper Labs on the 100 million Casper grant that was donated to XPRIZE. This grant has been approved in May of 2022 and had been in the works for at least six months prior to that. Moreover, XPRIZE is not just some company, but perhaps the world's best known non-governmental organization and has been around for almost 30 years. They funded hundreds of millions of dollars and literally sent projects to outer space. Now, why would the largest NGO build on Casper? That's easy. That's because of Casper's powerful account and governance structure model. More of a deeper dive will definitely be coming on this announcement, so stay tuned. Steve Carrega announced the release of Casper Punk's Gen 1 edition to be released in February with various utility behind this NFT, such as early access, rewards, community building, brand development, just to name a few. Whitelist is currently open until January 31st, I believe. And if you are interested, please follow their Twitter for more updates at Casper Punks. Pam Patagoff announced the partnership between GameSwift and Casper. GameSwift is built on Polygon. And what's interesting is just that like Casper, their SDKs allow developers to build and implement games without needing to learn any new proprietary blockchain specific language, making it easier for developers to onboard and build games and grow the ecosystem. They have an expected launch in March of this year. Also announced that they have signed some of the biggest groups of gaming studios, which will be set to release in the coming weeks. In all my heart, the CEO of Casper Labs also sat with Alex Kelly, CEO of Make, and John Weinberg to announce the release of a new blockchain game being built on the Casper network called Beast League. With that, it's great to see that the Casper NFT and gaming ecosystems are getting bigger, but definitely want to see more. Now, that brings us to the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, Pioneers, remember, nothing ventured, nothing gained. This is the way.